Welcome back to the Lunch Table, Food for Thought. I'm Nico Blitz. Subscribe, like, comment, rate, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio app. Yeah, that was pretty smooth, right? Um, Today, I'm just going to cut it short, man. We have a legend in the building. He pretty much created an entire genre that I want to say DJ Mustard kind of took and like made it really mainstream. And he goes by the name of J-Main. J-Main, what's poppin', man? Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? How you guys doing? Yo, I'm really happy to have you here, man. For real, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. Like for real, I never, I don't, I don't usually like get to talk about things, you know. Yeah. I usually, I'm the guy that's like <laughs> <laughs> behind the scenes and all that. So, it's well, cool. I mean, it's kind of hard being like the main guy of something because you, you're like primarily the behind the scenes guy. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like you kind of got to be a little bit of both, but I've taken more of the backseat to just kind of like put the the brand and the culture first before myself, you know? Oh, yeah, for Through sure. the years. But more lately, I've just kind of been more in the forefront, I guess you could say. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're, like, super active on your Instagram, bro. Like, whenever I scroll yeah. through your shit, I'm like, man, there's always, like, some inspirational shit, like, in this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just... Uh, <laughs> I feel like, yeah, the actual, like, how I am is really outgoing and really, like, you know, engaging with people. So, like, it's kind of it was kind of weird for me to, like, be in the background for so many years, to be honest, like... Being in so many street teams and like, I've I've been in on a lot of radio street teams and like for me I've been meeting so many people all the time so it's kind of weird like actually to like run a brand behind the scenes it's like I don't know it's weird. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> so then, did you ever want to be like the guy, like the uh, like on air personality type person? At one point, I was like, should I should I be on air and do radio? But then. I was like, uh, I don't know if I really want that to be my my thing, you know. Yeah. I, people wanted me to do that, but I truly like didn't want to do that deep down. I was like, eh, that's cool, mm. but I just loved meeting new people. That was that was yeah. the whole thing about being in radio. Oh, for sure, because I think a lot of people had like asked me this question on my Instagram story the other day, like, you know, like what's one thing that you need to do to like get in the industry? I'm like, like the thing you really need to do is just network, and yeah. I feel like radio being like. I guess like the first step into the entertainment industry is the best way to like build all your connections. Yeah, because it, it kind of like provides a platform for you to, you you kind of you're not forced, but you're put in positions to meet people, and there's a lot of cool uh, people doing things that come around the radio station. So it's like it's a no brainer to be in radio to like start s- some type of career in some aspect. Oh, of course, man. So um, you know, for you, you started off where 106 KML. Yeah, in the Bay, yeah. Uh, I'm from the Bay, so I started doing radio like in 2005, 2006 for KMEO. Damn, man. Yeah. Like smack in the middle of the hyphy movement. <laughs> yes. I was literally in, <laughs> I was in the hyphy movement, literally like in Vallejo, Oakland, all those cities with the radio station. So like I was really in that thing. So I don't think a lot of people would ever have that moment again. What was it like for you being just like smack in the middle of like when... Like, the Tell Me When It Goes, the Keek, the Sneaks, and all of them were just, like, really making a move for the Bay. Man, it was, like, it was a time of a, of, of a lifetime. Like, it was just, like, the music. That That's actually a really a big reason as to, like, why I'm doing what I do now. Just because, like, that whole sound is, like, I actually didn't grow up on hip-hop. Like, I actually <laughs> grew up on that Bay sound. Like, yeah. that's all that was on the radio. So, it was really crazy because every day, like, a new song would come out. With like a new artist from the Bay, and it was it was hard, like it was crazy sounding good, you know. Big Vaughn put a lot of people on, like KML that were mm. unknowns. So I was like, all these unknown artists, like really doing the sound. It was just crazy, bro. Was, oh, yeah. <laughs> even people in the streets, like meeting so many people in the streets during Ivy Movement, is just is ridiculous, bro. Oh yeah, man. And I feel like the Bay, like really captured that sound, and that was like the first introduction to like what the Bay Area is. Not supposed to sound like, but this is what we want our mainstream sound to be. Yeah, we had a lot. We're really cool, like people from Atlanta and the South. Like some for some weird reason, like the Bay is, we're just all connected. The South and the Bay. Like I'll go to Texas to visit family, and like they're playing Bay stuff out there. And then it's like that's crazy. It's weird, just because it's some eight oh eight thing, you know. Like, well, you know what's crazy is that uh, my boy Bootleg Hev, he actually like we were talking about this connection just the other day, and he was like, "Man, it has everything to do with the weed." <laughs> because Probably. you know that's where the packs are getting moved and i'm just Man. like i mean shit if you want to call it that could it definitely could be <laughs> like, it's like that plus like yeah it's just the music's kind of similar i guess like it's just weird i don't know 
Yeah. But yeah, I I was in it, man. For real. So even like smack in the middle of like oh five, oh six, were you like meeting artists while you were like working for Cameo? Yeah, I actually was. I was. And a lot of them were actually really cool. Even though I was like an intern at a radio station, like uh. the Bay Area local rappers were hella cool always, man. Like I met a lot of them and they're all hella cool. Who were you like shook off of at that time? <laughs> I probably met, like, I, I met San Quinn. Like, a lot of you won't know who that is, yeah, yeah. but that Legend. dude was hella cool, man. I was like, bro, you're San Quinn. Like, you're talking to me. And, <laughs> like, and then, uh, just like some, I'll probably tell you some names you wouldn't even know who it is, but. Try. Um, Man, you know what? I actually forgot his name right now, but like. Come on, dude, man. I know, Come right? On. I'm telling you, like, I'm not. I'm like, I'm not the rap guy. Like I'm literally the melodic guy. But you know, I go on and on. The Drake took his lyric um, from that uh, song. Short. No. Okay. No. I met too short. Yeah, for sure. I'm talking. Actually, it's another rapper. It's like a hella bay rapper. Like no one knows. Mm. I met him. He was crazy cool. Um, Tracks and millions. Hella cool. One of my producers. I thought was so dope from the bay. Oh yeah. Show enough. Um, man, just like a lot of people. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, dude, because I, I remember even back then, like, I couldn't really fathom, like, what it was like to actually, like, meet those people, because I would just, I would find a Tracks a Million song, like, man, this shit slap right now. Yeah. But it's like, I never got the opportunity, like, because I think back then I was maybe, like, 13, 14, so I didn't really, like, know what was going on. I just knew, like, man, they're on my iPod. Yeah. <laughs> I'm slapping this shit right now. Yeah, it was a lot of, um, it was kind of like a... A ripple effect, you know, you have one producer do this sound and another one and another one and then before you know it, like it's all like slapping ass, like, you know, just tracks. <laughs> it's yeah. Just crazy. Sure. Yeah. It was no, a good time. You know, I know that was like really early in your career, but like did you ever like get in a studio setting like at that time or were you like solely just doing radio shit back then? Yeah, I actually engineered at a studio um when I was like seventeen, eighteen in San Francisco. Oh, tight. I happened to meet like a, a guy that had a studio set up already and he was he was actually a pimp. And um his girl, you know, he would get a lot of money from his girl, so he had all the top of the line equipment. So I was using yeah. it at like eighteen, using a Sony C eight hundred G mic and tube tech compressor and like everything already. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew it was good. I didn't know how good it is. Like now I know is like he had the Dr. Dre chain, like Damn. signal chain, you know. Neve into a tube tech into like a you know what I mean into a uh, Sony C hundred G. I was using that that chain back then. Honestly, don't know what you mean, but that shit sounds complicated <laughs> as fuck. To be honest, it's it's expensive. Like yeah. it's a very expensive vocal chain. You know, running your mic into all that crap. So yeah, I was doing that at seventeen or eighteen. So then, who taught you how to engineer? Nobody. I just wow. I just learned it. Like I was just like uh, I don't know. I pretended <laughs> like I knew. I had clients, man. Like I pretended like I knew what I was doing with clients. But honestly, it doesn't really matter because the the, the signal was so clean coming in. Mm -hmm. You can't really mess it up. Like so, even if I did record them and I messed up, they could take that somewhere else and get it mixed. You know. Well, shit, man. At the end of the day, like at least <laughs> your name was looking really good. Like man, he's making my shit sound crispy as fuck man. right now. I yeah, I was so thankful for uh, the the homie that let me use that studio, man. He was like he trusted me with his equipment and stuff. And shout out to Starsky, I'll say his name. You know, what I mean, he's he's a cool dude, um, and it, it taught me a lot. You know, that taught me a lot, a lot, because some of the clients I did get, I learned from that, and I still like apply it today. You know, I mean, what were you learning aside from like, I mean, were you learning beyond just like the logistics of engineering? Yeah, because I was. Um, Recording my boy 18, shout out to 18. He changes his name all the time, but <laughs> he taught me how to like complete a song, you know, like to go in and not just like, yeah, well, let's just get this verse done and then we'll just, we'll knock it out next week. Like, literally, this guy wouldn't let me leave till the whole song's done oh, on his flash drive. He's like, man, if my wife, he's, he had a wife, so he's like, man, if I don't got a song on my flash drive tonight, my wife's gonna kill me, bro. So I was like, she gonna think I was fucking yeah, around all yeah. night. It was like, it's like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. It's like, bro, I need a song on my flash track. Like a, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm so tired now. Come on, man. I'm bro, like, all right, all right. Here you are engineering and saving relationships at the exact same time, bro. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would kind of get mad. Like, come on, I'm tired, man. We already got like a hook. He's like, no. So that taught me completion. Like, yeah. Get it done. And I apply that today. I'm like, yo, let's get this whole thing done. I'm not here to play around in the studio. 
because he wasn't there to play around. So I was pissed then, but now I'm like, wow. It's like, duh, don't mess around in the studio. Get it done, bro. Oh, yeah, for sure, because then you apply that, like, several years later. You're, like, you're probably cranking shit out, like, super bro. quick. Yeah, it's it's nothing to me now. It's like it's really it's really on the artist to be honest. Like, I just don't go with those artists that just kind of half-ass it. Like, yeah, I kind of pinpoint who's gonna get it done, and I go in and knock it out. Well, it makes it easier for your process too. And like at that point, you don't have to waste any time. Yeah, because if you think about it, like you're burning studio time just messing around. Like somebody's paying for it, even if you're not paying for it. Whoever owns the studio is paying for it. You know, so. I'm like, look, this is my studio, so I know like me messing around, so we're just burning. We're just, it's pointless. So, yeah, it's very, you know, going in, I'm ready. I'm ready to attack and kill. So then, are there moments in which like you, like even, even though like artists pay for studio time, right? Are there moments in which like you feel like you need to deny a particular artists because their work ethic just isn't there? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I could kind of just tell like through the gram or like, through their stories, you know, there's a lot of studios where just people hang out and stuff. Mm. And I'm just not about that life. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, bro, we're in the studio. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> would you really knock out? <laughs> like, I seen you in there. <laughs> You're, you guys are laughing and stuff and like having fun. Like, and don't get me wrong, the studio is a fun environment. You know, what I mean, having tons of people. But then again, it's like, what are you really doing? You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, oops. That's all good, man. But yeah, so like, yeah. I'm just not one to play around no more. Like, I'm getting older. I'm like, I'm ready to kill the world. I'm ready to like take over, so. How old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm actually 32. Okay. Almost. Well, by this yeah. interview, I'm 32, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, I'm turning 26 in like a couple days. Yeah, yeah. I'm reaching that mark, bro. Yeah. And like, you know, at least for me, I've always had this discussion in which like, you know, being being in like the music industry, everything's happening so fast, and then like... I found myself early in my career like comparing myself to people who were like older like oh I need to be I need to do this by the time I'm like 25 I need to be this like by the time I'm 30 did you ever like find yourself wrapped up in those comments Um actually like a little bit at first but like not really like I've never I've always like lived my life the way I felt it was just panning out to be you know I was never like oh I need to like I started R and bass when I was like 27 oh, wow. <clears throat> so I wasn't even thinking of it. I was kind of in my mind. I'm like, damn, like, I feel like I'm kind of old, bro. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, you're really not. Like, it's like, even Ghazi from Empire, I've read his uh, story or his post. He's like, I started Empire at 33. I'm like, damn, bro. Damn. Like, so that puts things into perspective, right? It's like, yeah. what is old? Like, you know, just nah. Yeah. It's like old isn't necessarily a factor. It's just a matter of if you have that motivation to keep it moving, despite if you start an R and bass at twenty seven or you start an empire at thirty three. Yeah, because like, what what does that mean? You just don't want to look old. Like, you want <laughs> you don't have a business looking hella old, or it's like why? Why does old mean like you know? People always have like ageism. Like, oh oh shit, he's forty. Like, well, he they can't like kind of write you off. But mm. I don't really believe in all that. Like, it's like, bro. Charlemagne's 40, 41, you know what I mean? Like, he's on the hottest podcast in the world, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. So what does it mean? Like, And the most successful, like, radio hosts don't, be, you know, reach their peak until they're 40. Right. It's because of, like, the your brain development, your knowledge, and your experience and everything. You're able to finally kind of, you know, just soak it all in by that time. Like, honestly, yeah. at age 25 through 30, you're just not mentally ready in my opinion yet Mm. like because just there's certain things that you just got to go through bro like you just got to go and you got to get knocked down you got to get this threatened you got to get everything bro and that all didn't happen till you know i was like 28 29 30 yeah so so you so you're saying like the the ballpark 25 through 30 is when you go through like all the shit that's gonna punch you in the face yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah because like 22 through 25 is Pretty, it's like it's cool, you know what I mean? It's like you're kind of struggling, you're you're becoming an adult, and then after 25, you know, it's like, well, you're kind of like damn near on your own, and then you're really learning like how people really treat you, mm. you know? Because 25 through 20, like people are a little nicer to you, like, oh, he's young, you know, like oh, that's cool, like he'll learn. 25 through 30, they're like, man, you know this, like, come on, bro, you know. So, what experiences were you going through between like 25 and 30 that was like punch you in the face? <laughs> 
Well, when I started R and bass, I mean, mm. I've had everything happen to R and bass like that you could think of that a lot of people don't go through and they need to. Like having my channel taken down, copyright strikes, wow. death threats, yeah. you death know, threats. everything. Yeah, everything you could think of, bro. I've had it. People just like blackballing you, blah blah blah. What, what okay. Arm base, the genre, your brand. Why are you getting death threats off of that? Man, because people sometimes feel some type of way, you know? Because, like, if you're stepping on someone's toes or, you know, blah, 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 they they think they deserve this and then you were doing this and, blah, you know, it's just like all types of factors out there. Yeah. Like, you can't do that. And, you know, people have all their opinions out there. And, you know, people hate. There's haters. There's big haters out there. I hear you, man. I mean, it's it's just kind of like crazy to me to know that information that just off of like a brand that you get death threats, man. Because you know, I I'll be on the YouTube comments sometimes. Motherfuckers be like, "Ah, oh, man, this interviewer sucks. <laughs> He's the worst." I'm just like, "Yeah, hey, you know, whatever. I'll take the yeah. slight jabs, but that's insane." Oh man, yeah, it's it is insane. So then even um, you know, building R and base for like the past five years, aside from the death threats, let's say like what what's been like a what's been like a struggle for you in terms of like the growth? Um, I would say a, a struggle for the growth would be like competing against big money, you know, mm. and like tricks, you know, and um, there's like a lot of nerds and people that have money that are just like manipulating the system and they're making it look like their things bigger than it really is. Mm. And people are like, oh, wow, they praise that, but they really don't know like, there's tons of money behind it and tons of like tricks and things going into it. Oh yeah. Plus like major corporations trying to shut you down. Like that's another thing. Like Damn. you can't just win without like eyes on you. And then they, they kinda like analyze what you're doing and they try to, you know They try to like nip you in the butt immediately. Yeah. Just like uploading a song or uploading something that's copywritten or little things like that or you know, it's just really dumb, bro. I've had to get every channel back just through copyright infringement. So how many channels have you had to go through? I mean, I've luckily got all my channels back, but I've definitely got them all taken down at one point. Whoa. Yeah. Did you ever feel like, I guess, disheartened because it just kept on happening to you over and over again? Yeah. Yeah. It, it kind of kicks you down for a minute. But then at, at the end of the day, you realize like, wow, I'm so thankful to have this back. So let me just keep it moving. You know, or else you could just dwell and just kind of like curl up and die off, you know, <laughs> mi being miserable. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good off that. Well, I think even with the amount of artists that you allow onto your platform, did you ever feel like you had the responsibility to like keep them moving as well? Yeah. It, yes, exactly. Like, I felt like, man, I, I have so many people rooting for me and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I just got the artists on my side. Like, I got I can't stop, you know. And that's the type of person I am. I'm just like, I'm like the people's champ. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, let's go. Like, I snuck into SoundCloud to get my channel back, back in like, you know, 2015. <laughs> yeah, like for real. Can you share more of that story? Yeah, yeah. My channel had gotten shut down pretty much um, one day because I was like, I was doing a really guerrilla style. You know, I was uploading pretty big songs, but I was a little naive. You know, like I didn't know how it really worked. Mm -hmm. They shut me down. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to... I got so many... I got like 50 texts like, hey, what happened to the channel? Hey, what happened? Like, see, people relying on me, you know? So I'm like, damn, I got to go to the Bay to visit my mom and my family. But I'm like, yo, SoundCloud has an office in the Bay. Ooh. Yes. Okay. I'm like, you know what? Let me go to SoundCloud and see what's up. So I end up going to the Bay and I go to try to find SoundCloud. It's really like in the cut, man. Like they got like a coffee shop and they got like a steel door oh, and all that. I'm like... Fuck? It's probably in here, <laughs> but I have like a code on the thing, you know, like you got to punch the numbers in to get in the door. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh, I'm screwed. I'm like, I'm screwed, bro. Like, but this lady came out and I grabbed the door right when she came out and I, <laughs> I went inside. Hella sly. Bro, I went inside there and I found the office and I just went in the office and there's like two people in there. They're like, you know, when they see me, they're like, hi, how could we help you? Yeah. I was like, hey, uh. <laughs> I, my channel got shut down. Uh, <laughs> it was just funny. So I just talked to them and like, they're actually pretty cool. Oh, okay. Um, but they're like, yo, there's still, I'm the one you're actually emailing. The lady I was talking to was the one I was emailing back and forth That's with. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's like that small of a company. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, R&Base. Oh yeah, I was the one to email. I'm like, oh damn. 
she already told me there's nothing we could do. That's why I was like, fuck, you know, but, um, she's like, you know what? I'll just email the person that gave you a strike for you. I was like, wow, that's, that'll be cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she did that. They emailed her back like a week later and said, no, nah, we're still going to, no, nah, I'm good. We're good. Mm. We're going to still shut them down. I'm like, wow. That, that kind of gave me a taste of like how the, the business is. It's like, they're ruthless. I don't care about you, bro. And then one week later, it's like, guess they emailed me back. Like, oh, your channel's reinstated. I'm like, what? What the hell? Crazy. Yeah. I don't know. No explanation <laughs> for it whatsoever. No. Well, that, that's insane. Because a part of me was thinking like, well, she kind of just like sent that email over just to like appease you for the time being like, man, this motherfucker is crazy. He just like snuck into our building right now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then the record label's like, no, we're not doing anything. And then a week later they reinstate it. So maybe, maybe uh, the person had to change their heart. I don't know. Possibly. That could, that was honestly about to be the end of R&B right there. Wow. Because that, the SoundCloud was like everything to me. It was like, because it was at the time SoundCloud was really hot. Yeah. And I was like, if I lose this, I got to start over and it's just not even worth it. Like, I spent so much time in under that SoundCloud. Yeah. Yeah. I had 7,000 followers, but like at that time, that was, it was reactive. Like, it's 100,000. So. Damn, man. And to think <laughs> that's when r and bass could have just like went down the drain. That's insane. Yeah. Because yeah, it's just kind of like a kick in, like kick you when you're down type feeling. Like, yeah. Like, damn, I went here and then they helped and then they said no. <laughs> it's like, I was just like, all right, you know what? Well, I'm sure after that point, you decided not to put all your eggs in that one basket. Exactly. It's a lesson learned. Yeah. That's why I was like, okay, let me get my YouTube really big. Let me get this big, my Instagram, you know, Twitter, all that. Yeah. Yeah. And are you doing everything by yourself? I have a small team. Okay. But I always look for like the newest, youngest minds that like got their ear or eyes on the pulse for sure. Yeah. And then I'm assuming those people like really stay updated with like, not necessarily what's high, but like, you know, what really like captures the R&B sound. Yeah. Funny enough too, like I have a lot of people that just send me R&B related stuff all the time too. Damn, man. Yeah. So I have like just ears and eyes just out there, like just sending me stuff like. Is it crazy knowing that, like, so this is, like, my assumption, right? Like, when you first start r and you're the one constantly seeking out these artists. Is it crazy knowing that now you're at the point in which, like, you probably have, like, a email stock full of, like, songs that you probably haven't even listened to yet? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the artists now come to me. Like, I get at least 50 to 100, you know, artists daily or bi-daily, you know what I mean, just hitting me with stuff. So it's like... A lot of it's not good, <laughs> but yeah. still, though, it's, like, really interesting. I'm like, where do they even continue to find, like, it's crazy, bro. Um, it's it's cool, though. It's, like, a cool feeling of, wow, like, my brand, even though, even if I, like, take my foot off or my team pick, takes a foot, foot off the gas for, like, days, it'll, it'll just stockpile up. Damn, man. Yeah. That's an insane feeling. I'm trying to get on that level to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> you can. You can. Like... It's just consistency over years, you know? It doesn't happen overnight. And if it does, it's not good. Yeah, because I'm sure there's probably just long nights where you, similar to, like, the engineering situation back in the Bay, where you just have to, like, keep on going because I was talking to my homie about how to become a millionaire, and you basically need to have, like, six different revenue streams. So right now I have three jobs, this, DJing, and over at the radio station. I'm like... So what are the other three? Yeah. And the other three is basically when if you can sleep and you have like three businesses that are just like running itself, you're a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. I that is how to do it, man. I mean, there's a lot of ways to to make a million. I'm not there yet, you know, and I'm still I have like different sources, you know. But it's really just how hard are you gonna work, you know? And how smarter are you gonna work? Hmm. If you're just working hard to something that's, like, not really paying off, you know? You have to be really smart, smart about it. A lot of people are putting in hard work in an area that's not going to pay off because hmm. they're, they're not looking at the long spectrum. You know, they're like, oh, three people are doing this. I could do it. It's like three people out of six billion are doing that. you got to be a little realistic. Like, are you meant to do that? You have to ask, like, different variables, like, how good are you at this or... You know, how long, how did this person do it? Or, you know, just like different things. So then I guess where do you owe the success to for your brand? Like Um, what keeps it 
like in terms of like you see like the long game, right? Like what is the long game for you? I would uh well first of all I, I probably the success of my brand probably is myself. You know, I was just chosen to do it. Like it's weird as it sounds, like I'm just that guy that understands that music well enough and how to you know do evasive maneuvers to be that guy. Like it's just weird. Not everyone can just do what I do, and it's people try and everyone tries to do things like I'm not meant to be blah 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 Charlemagne you know what I mean that guy just did it you know what I mean so and then it's just like it just happens the way it happens if it's meant to be it's meant to be man like I could have got shut down all those times and I didn't I'm still here I work on music and it's you know does what it does like it's all meant to be um I forgot what else you said, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like, yeah, man, yeah, it's crazy. Everything's meant to be. That's what it is. Um. So one thing that actually really got to me today, I was like just looking on your story, and then you posted this photo. Uh, basically, the caption says the pic reminds me of why I keep doing this shit. I get fifty to one hundred people asking me to repost, promote their music, but no one genuinely asks you how you're doing mentally. Yeah. So like what kind of I guess what kind of like stress does carrying this brand have on you? It's a lot. It's like it's like the weight of the world on your shoulders, you know? It's like everyone just wants, 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 like all day, every day. But it's never like, yo, Jay, how are you, bro? Like genuinely. And if you think about it, we're all human, man. Like, I'm not a fuck. well, maybe I am an alien. I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave that. We'll leave that to debate. But or you could be a clone like Kid Boo. Yeah, if you're on that, bro. I could be. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but the thing is, like at the end of the day, even if you are a clone, an alien, whatever the hell you are, a human, you still gotta be. You 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 still have feelings, you know. As far as we know, like, and um, it takes a lot out of you when every single day you get a new text. It's like, hey, bro, could you do this for me? It's like, whoa, like mm. okay, a little energy taken out here. Hey man, could you post this for me? Bam, energy taken out here. Hey, did you finish this? Bam, energy taken out here. Hey, could you do this for me? Bam. So anyway, think about that every day for four or five years. So like, that's a lot. That's a lot, you know. So try and then being like, you know, just a guy that's like, you know, solo. Like I don't have a family out here. It's almost like okay, damn, who do I even go to? Like, so it's something. It gets really hard, bro. It does. So then how do you combat that? How are you, like, so stable right now? It's insane. <laughs> Man, you know what? It's called mind power. That's what it is. Literally, that's the only thing that keeps me, like, stable is, like, the power of the mind. Like, it's like a gym for my brain. Like, it's just like, bro, just hold on, you know? That and probably, like, maybe tea or coffee you know <laughs> there <laughs> a it little is. a little endorphin release you know like yeah because honestly like i don't really um entertain women like that like i'm not even like trying to chase girls and like blah 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 and i don't you know i barely go out to eat anymore it's more like on some like you know so it's crazy i don't even mm. know how i do it because i don't hit anyone up to to let out my emotions which is crazy so it's literally all in me. Yeah. Damn, man. So now now I'm getting like this sort of feeling that like you're spilling as much as you can right now. I know, right? <laughs> Nico, please talk to me, man. Talk to me. No, but like seriously, man, like it, I think I don't think a lot of people realize that like how far just a simple how are you can go. You know? Man. A genuine how are you could really like change someone's day or week or who knows, you know? And it's crazy. Like, the compassion us humans have is, like, dwindling down because of, like, social media portraying, you know, you, you know, as, like, a superstar on even regular people's pages. So it's, like, almost like, damn, everyone's a star. Like, you, they're good. Like, everyone's good. Now, wait, I want to be a star, too. Forget you. Mm. So everyone's kind of, like, on their own wave. And they kind of forget to like check in with people. Oh yeah. So it's, gonna, it's a lot. I mean, we see what like superstardom can do, like between like the Lindsay Lohan's, 
you know, the MJs, the R. Kellys, and it's like, yeah. that shit can really, like, fuck with people. Like, I've, I haven't spoken to, like, a, I guess, like, child celebrity yet, which is, like, something, like, on my bucket list, but then, like, we see these instances in which, like, they grow up way too quickly, and it affects them later on. Yeah. And even like a Robin Williams or like just any of these celebrities, whether it's child or, you know, it's a lot, man. It's our Mac Miller, you know, the stress. We never know the true stress they're going through. And I'm sure like just talking to someone sometimes is like so relieving, someone you could genuinely talk to. And that's why I feel like people just got to be there for others. You know, like someone like even a me, you don't know, like maybe I'm crashing down and then you're like yo how are you you want to go get food like whoa that might have saved my life you know what Mm. i mean or to whoever it may be so like i'm trying to be like you know i know i'm going 100 miles an hour thousand miles an hour with my brand but i still try to check in with people when i can you know and i'm always genuine about it i don't really want anything from people like people always take from me i never even ask anybody for anything which is crazy i'm just like bro how are you man like would you like? <laughs> it's just a way. You, it's it's almost your upbringing, to be honest. So, do you ever feel like, despite having several emails like thrown at you, a lot of people like asking you for stuff, do you ever feel like just alone? <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. Um, just cause it's kind of like you need people to fall back on, bro. You know, and uh, <laughs> as you get older. It's sad, like you, you just like hard to meet people, you know. So, I took on DJing, you know, recently, and I feel like that's a dope outlet to like get out there, you know what I mean, and just meet people and and you know what I mean. It's sometimes it's deeper than how it looks. Like, oh fuck, he's just, he's just trying to do this. He's just, well, actually, no, I'm just I'm actually like trying to get out and get out of my house, you know what I mean? Huh. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, that's all it is. But I don't want people to feel bad for me or anything. No, for sure. But you know. If you are starting a business, you know, or you're trying to do something epic, just know what comes with it. It's a lot of loneliness. That's why there's that saying, it's real lonely at the top. Very true. I'm not even at the top yet, but I will tell you, it gets lonely. Because people feel like they you're way you're doing way a lot and they can't like they're like, Oh yeah, bro, you're good, man. Like they don't even want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know? So just keep that in mind. The higher you go. So it must be like kind of weird if people like look up to you as kind of like this untouchable god who like can't give me their time right now. Yeah. Because I remember just like you know moments in which like we've passed by each other like you know whether it be at events or what and I'm like I could tell he's busy so we're just gonna say what's up and like you know just like plant the seed. Right. Yeah, but I would I would I would probably argue and say that like a lot of the people that you probably look up to and. You know, they're probably down to have a, a convo with you, man. Like, down to talk. You know, you just probably catch them. If you catch them and they're, like, kind of, like, anxious, like, oh, bro, I'm not trying to. It's probably just the wrong moment, to yeah, be honest. for sure. Yeah. But I'm probably 100% like they're down to talk. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I haven't had, like, that, that uh, moment, like, with you at all. So I'm just, like, you know, I, I think, like, the more we go to these events and the more, like, we kind of like try to network with each other we kind of have to realize like yeah we're all here for that same purpose we all want to get to know each other but it's like it's just like little by little and it's like nobody's just gonna like spill their guts like right (laughs) then and there you know what i mean yeah yeah people definitely like have their defense mechanisms and like their wall up you know which is good you know but yeah it's man we all as humanity just got to come together it's definitely probably not gonna happen anytime (laughs) soon but Hope it does. <laughs> um, you know, one thing I want to ask you, like, what what high school did you go to? I went to Jefferson. I went to a few. I went to Terranova in Pacifica, and then I went to uh, El Camino in South City. Dude, you went fucking everywhere. And then I ended up at Jeff in Daly City. That's hella funny. <laughs> I, I love, dude. Yeah, because then my sister ended up going to Jeff. I had hella homies who went to Elko. And yep. then, like, I don't know anybody that went to turn over, though. Like, know, from a yeah. personal standpoint. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But, like, um, I think Jeff was always, like, the athletic school. And El Camino was always, like, the creative school. Like, that's where all the creatives went. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love Jeff. Like, I ended up at Jeff. That, that school is so dope. I yeah. was really, like, involved there. Yeah. What were you doing, like, at Jeff? Um, I was in all the high school plays. 
and uh, I was doing plays. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit! I was like the lead in like one or two plays, and then I was um, doing the morning announcements, and I was a rally commissioner too. What the hell? Yeah, so I ran all the rallies and did all that. So you were like you were like the face of the school at one point, basically. I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. And at the same time, I was at Cameo, and I was on WB20 TV. So you're interning while you're in high school. Yeah. At the same time. Wow. Yeah. And you're engineering at the same time? Yeah. Yep. God. And I was on TV, too. For what? Uh, WB20. It's like a the WB channel, but like local. Oh, wait. <laughs> so wait, were, you, were you acting or like... Yeah, it was like student council commercials. Oh, okay. like I Just mean, like 30-second PSA commercials. Like, don't do drugs. You know, just stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever want to be an actor since you were like doing plays in high school? Yeah, that's kind of like originally what I wanted to do. It's like act... And, um, but the music was just in me, you know? So just, it just happened the way it happened. Yeah, man. Yeah. At least you knew that like right then and there and you were like, nah, I'm, I'm still going to go hard on acting and on this music shit at the same time. Yeah, exactly, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking what? back is just like, it's crazy how the journey takes you, you know, go with the flow of life. Yeah. Well, even part of your journey, like, so doing all that in high school, interning for KMEO, and then you move out to LA. How big of a move was that for you? It's big. I mean, I didn't really want to. I don't really. I didn't really plan it. I wasn't ever planning it. Never in my radar did I was was I gonna move to LA. And my boy just convinced me. He's like, "Bro, you produce. You need to be in LA." I was like, uh, "Okay, I guess. I don't know." I was like, "Hmm," you know. And then he's <laughs> like, "I'm I'm gonna move there. You could move with me." I was like. All right, I'll try it, I guess. Oh, shit. I was just going to stay in the Bay, but I moved with him, and uh, yeah, that's how it happened. <laughs> Damn, man, that's crazy. Yeah. So, um, you know, when you first moved out here, did you think that... Let me rephrase. Yeah, actually, did you think it was, like, the right move for you at that time? Um, I think I, th- I felt like it was. I was just going with the flow of life, and... um. I was like, this is weird. It felt really weird because I had lived my whole life in the Bay. Yeah. And L.A. wasn't even on my vision, but I knew that I wanted to do music. So I was like, hmm, this, this is interesting. I don't know anyone here, but it feels weird. But I, I think this is the right thing. So how many years have you been out here in L.A. now? Probably nine years now. Yeah, man. So you're basically like... Yeah. You're like in L.A. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was. I'm glad I did it. Why? Just more, uh, it's, it's harder out here. It's, it's like just crazier. It's more, it's a lot that you got to go through. The Bay is like a certain, like a little, you know, it's a melting pot, but it's like there's a certain level that you reach and you're like, they don't let you out of there. It's like, mm. no, ooh, you're a Bay, you're a Bay artist, you're a Bay this. It's never like global. You got to kind of move to LA. That's why like the Kehlani's, the Jeezy's, the... You know what I mean? They mm-hmm. all come to LA. You notice that? Like, oh no, for sure. And I have that conversation all the time, in which like, I've always felt like the only, the biggest you can get in the Bay is an E40, which is great. You know what I mean? Right. But at the same time, he like he owns like his liquor companies and all that, and he does like other shit, whatever. But if you want to achieve like national superstardom, you have to move out. That's why after like we seen G Easy and Kehlani, um. I think Bobby Brackens lives out here too. Yeah. Mark E. Basie. Yeah. Um, even her, for example, right? Her did not want to say she was from the Bay because she would just be classified under that immediately. Right. And I'm like, yo, that's a, actually a really smart move. Which she's actually a, fa- a family friend of ours, actually. Oh, wow. Like my uncle and her dad are like hella cool and they've been cool for years. I actually always knew her as like the family friend that like it's weird. It's really <laughs> weird because she's from Vallejo. Yeah, and my dad, like my uncle, lives in Benicia, which is like close to Vallejo. They didn't know each other. Yeah, weird, man. See, y'all were like kicking it when y'all were kids. No, nah, I didn't kick oh, it no. with her, but I just always <laughs> knew like we always just knew that she was like a family friend. You know? Yeah. This is just real, really weird, but yeah, exactly though. Yeah, man. She never. I've never heard her say Vallejo one time actually. She probably has said it, but I personally haven't said, heard her say that. Well, shit, I only had that from like word of mouth. It wasn't even off an interview or anything. I think Jasmine was the one who told me, like, yeah, she's from Vallejo. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, right. You're from the same city as Mac yeah. Trey. Come on. <laughs> that shit makes no sense to me, man. Yeah. The same people as like, um, 
uh, S O B R B E, but it's just like the difference in it is just it's insane to me. And you don't necessarily classify her under like Bay music, even At though all. she is from the Bay. At all. And then she went to New York and then did her thing out there, and you know it's like that's a Bay artist. Even like, for instance, a uh, producer out of Atlanta. Um, <laughs> he's from the Bay too. What the heck is his name? My mind's blanking out right now. <laughs> but um, there's a hell of people from the Bay, and once you kind of move, it's like it's weird. I don't know why L.A. opens so many doors, Atlanta opens so many doors. What do you think the Bay's problem is then? I think the Bay, Bay Area people are very proud people, and I think they don't want to let it go. That's what I think it is. Like, man, I'm from the Bay, man. <laughs> I'm from the Bay. <laughs> like when you're Yo, there, yeah. that's so <laughs> right? <Am I> right? <laughs> it's like okay, okay, like we get it, uh, and the, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's what it is. It's like overly proud. Like man, man, us out here, what we do out here is like okay, okay, okay. So like when you go to LA, it's more like all right, I'm just I'm I'm from the Bay, but like I'm ready to, you know, mm, I'm ready to work. Because there's yeah. a whole bunch of people here also who are just ready to work. And it's like, yeah. you can't necessarily, like... I mean, you can rep where you're from when you're in L.A., but it's like, you ain't got, like, all your boys. You ain't got your posse with you, so you can't just be like, ugh. Exactly. It's, it's just kind of, like, repelling when you're like, man, I'm from yes. Atlanta, man. I'm from Atlanta. It's like, oh, my bad. Like, so stay with your Atlanta people who are yeah, in L.A. Yeah, it's just a repelling thing to mm. say. Man, it's New York, man. We, we in New York, it's like, okay, okay. So that's like, you know, you, wow, that yeah. makes perfect sense to me now. It definitely is repelling. Yeah. Because with L.A., with the amount of people who are just like not from L.A., you kind of have to be just a little bit more careful because like, I mean, it goes back to that saying like you just never really know who you're talking to mm-hmm. type of shit. Right. And in the Bay, it's kind of like, well, I mean, you know, same situation in the Bay, but it's just like you kind of have a little bit more like beef to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you add uh, some type of factor where it's like, okay, it's almost like the lunch, no no pun intended, yeah. the lunch table, right? It's like, oh, you can't sit with us kind of mentality. <laughs> well, man, I'm from the Bay, man. We don't. It's like, oh, shit, you can't sit with us. You know, we do this and you do that. Mm. So it's almost just you're creating this gap and that's all it is. So, you know, it's making more sense to me because, uh, you know, one of my people over at the radio station, he always talks about how people from the Bay always feel like they never get the, I guess, credit they deserve. But this conversation we're having just puts a little bit more sense to it that if we're like, we're so proud of it that people kind of just get like, yo, whatever then. It's yours, but we don't really care. Yeah. And I, and I feel that way too with some LA artists. Like sometimes it's like, man, it's LA, man, it's Compton. We out here like, it's like, whoa, like, Dang, it's, that means I can't work with you then, because I'm, you know, it's like it's almost like, oh damn, I want to work with you, but like, yeah, you're doing that thing, like, so that repels you to work with your people that are more accepting to you, which is usually people where you're from, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. weird, man. I guess it, it definitely is a pride thing because um, we were talking about how some one of the biggest people to come out of L.A. or who we think is gonna like be big is Roddy Rich. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't necessarily have like that whole like L.A. sound, even though like he reps L.A. But like, I guess it takes somebody like a Roddy Rich or a G Easy or Kate Lawney to be like, yeah, we know where we're from, but there's a way bigger purpose than just like I'm a put on for the Bay and only for the Bay. Yeah, it's more like a rooting. It's like the nation's rooting for you. Yeah, you know, the world's rooting for you. And whoever gravitates to is rooting for you. Not just like L.A. only. L.A. You know. Which is still tight. Like, repping for your city is, is dope. Like, like her has never said Vallejo. I think that would be cool if she said that. Like, oh, she'd have, like, more people rooting. But then again, she's smart because she's just accepting everybody. Like, mm-hmm. yo, let's go. Every, anyone who likes me from any city, you know. So that's why I haven't heavily been like, man, it's Bay Area out here. <laughs> 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 it's crazy even the bay area people out here though kind of like have are clicked up still too you know mm. so it's almost like can't really avoid it you know it's gonna happen forever but 
Yeah, I'm world, man. I'm like Team Earth, you know? Team Earth. Yeah. Team Earth. I fuck with that. You're not like vegan, though, or anything. Nah, much. nah. Okay. I'm not earthy, <laughs> <laughs> but I am Team Earth. Oh, that's, that's so what's up, man. Yeah, all this talk about like pride and everything, like it, it's definitely a conversation piece that I'm going to be like repeating to everybody now because it's, I don't know, it's a really good perspective, man. So thank you yeah. for that. That shit oh, helps no. out a lot, bro. No, for sure. Yeah. It's a cool way to look at it. It's like, hmm, you know? Where are you from? I'm from San Francisco. I went to Archbishop Reardon High School. Oh, yeah, Reardon. Of course I know Reardon, yeah, bro. right across from the City College, where the only high school where it's all boys still. <laughs> <laughs> kind of by Ocean Street, kind of by um, uh, Stonestown a little bit, not really. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I would go to Roxy's all the time, though. Roxy Sandwiches, you ever had that? I haven't. I've seen it, though. Oh. I should go back and try that. Best sandwich spot ever. I, I tell my girl, I, it was um when we had our event over in the Bay, I brought my girl and like two of my homies with me. They're like, oh, what are we going to get for dinner? I'm like, fuck whatever you guys think. We're going to fucking Roxy's. We're grabbing some sandwiches. <laughs> Best fucking sandwich in the world. Free plug. I'm just saying. Roxy sandwiches off San Jose Avenue in San Francisco. Man, they need to be paying you. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Um, So Jay Main, man, like, Great conversation, a lot of great insight about like arm base too, man. So then, what is like? Let me let me get to this for first. Like, who are some artists like under your arm base sound that you're really pushing right now? Um, I hate to throw names out there sometimes because of like dating, you know, like dating per, like timeline, right? Because yeah. this interview could be a year later or whatever. But I will say, currently, um, Cassidy is this girl I'm working with, really, really dope. Um, Work with my producers, the Las Venus, a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a lot of a lot of talent out there, man. Um, I'm excited for a lot of folks. There's some real, real talent out there, man. Super undiscovered. Like, yeah, they're out there, bro. They're so out there. You got to have the correct ear, though. That's the thing. So then what... I guess a lot of artists are going to wonder, like, what what do you like look for in an artist like you know social media aside but like what kind of like sounds do you like look for i look for raw talent like just straight raw talent like i don't care about followers i don't care about hype anything if your best friend or your fan hypes me up about you don't care because i'm gonna (laughs) check you out and i'm gonna look in it and decide for myself because like people attach their emotion to people like oh this is the best artist ever no, you're just emotionally invested into them. That's mm. why you say that. Let me see what for real, for real, what they sound like, what they're, you know, what they're looking like, blah, 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 all the factors. And then raw talent, I love that. I'm on that. Period. Actually, looks to me don't even matter. I, I miss the the days of ugly ass artists on top, man. Like, cause it just is like, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, man. Like now it's like, oh, they gotta be pretty. Uh, bro, forget that talent. Hey, man. Shout out Brown Boy Maj, ugliest person I know who's, like, killing it right now. <laughs> shout He's out dope. Maj, man. Yeah. Are you checked out Brown Boy Maj? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've checked his stuff out a while ago. Oh, yeah. My boy so. Kev's actually managing him. Yeah, nice, like, yeah. Su- amazing album. I can't yeah, wait bro. to tell, by the way. I'm on it. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely on top of all the new people. Um, but like I said, there's always, like, a certain level, though, to where it's, like, you're good, but are you legendary, though? That's mm. how I look at it. Like, to me, really, really good isn't enough. You have to be a, a legend or extremely unique. That's the only way you're going to make it. Wow. Yeah. And so then I'm, I'm assuming that list between like legends and extremely unique isn't, like it's not big. <laughs> nah, nah. Um, the thing is, like, if you're not one of those, I'm not saying you can't have a career. I'm just saying you're living in this middle area of like you're in there, but you're not really like making a huge impact. Hmm. You're like kind of just going by doing good music, great music, and that's your career and game. That's it, you know, end of story. Legends are the ones that are just like impacting and they just create the wave, create the the thing you know for hundreds of years. And you know what I mean? Hmm. Super unique. It's like, wow, so dope. It's a new way, a new perspective. If you're just good and you kind of sound like somebody else and you're, you're dope, but you're not like, you're just using auto tune, you're not doing any, you know, it's like, you're cool, like, but you're not going to, you know, how are you going to beat the greats? You're not yeah. going to beat, you're not going to be better than the greatest. 
you'll always be not as good. I guess it's the difference between somebody who, I guess, is like the J. Coles or the Kendricks versus like what's trending right now. Because yeah. really what's trending back is like the auto-tunes and whatnot, right? And we have all these SoundCloud artists like using auto-tune, but if you date it all the way back, the first person who really made it prominent was like the T-Pain. So mm-hmm. the T-Pain is the legend, the unique person, whereas like everybody else is kind of like just, I guess, taking from that just a little bit. Yeah, and you got to ask yourself like, why is T-Pain still here? Why is he still here? And there's another guy, right? Like a... I'll just throw a name. I don't know. Roddy Rich, right? Mm-hmm. T-Pain is still here. Ha- dropped a whole album, and here's Roddy Rich. Now let's fast forward another 10 years. Who will still be here? Mm. You know, I don't know. I don't know, dude. But I will say T-Pain is super unique, and he's still here. And he's He has a stamp on his, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Trending. The, even saying trending, is it means it's a trend. Mm-hmm. Trends come and go. So, like, all the SoundCloud rap and blah, 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 blah. Uh, super auto-tuned and weird. You know, it's like, it's cool. It's, it's trendy. Hella trendy. It'll be gone, though. Why would I, like, invest all my energy into all the trends? Like, oh, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. You're just going <laughs> to, like, kill yourself. Like, go with the, the top, the creme de la creme. You know what I mean? That's my philosophy. Like, I give people that are cool a chance all the time. You know, but me personally, what I like is that. You know, the long lasting stuff. So speaking on trends then, man, um so how arm bass is would you say it's like somewhat influenced by the hyphy movement? Um, I would say a little bit. Okay. So seeing as how like obviously to us hyphy is still like alive and well, but to like mainstream audiences like hyphy is like, yeah, that was like some oh six, oh seven <laughs> shit. Um, considering that R and bass is like even somewhat influenced by the hyphy movement, would you ever consider R and bass just being like a trending genre, or has it not even like opened up to the mainstream yet? The thing about it is, um, that's a great question. When I first started R and bass, I was very like small minded about it. I was like, uh, I'm gonna call my stuff R and bass, and like whatever has this kind of eight away this sound is gonna be it. But then as I dug into SoundCloud, I, I found so many records that could still fit into it. I was like, damn, this song from Atlanta could be R&B based. Wow, this one. Wow, this could be R&B based. Whoa, that could actually be R&B based. Like stuff that didn't even have the same sound, but it was still in that thing, right? So I was like, this is actually bigger than what I thought. Mm-hmm. I was like, I didn't really think of it like that. I was like being very small-minded, but I opened my mind. I'm like, holy crap, I just actually like opened something crazy, like open a can of worms like it's like now it's like what the so the sound isn't just like the hyphy sound it's like r and bass is today's r and b you know you're calling all this music r and b you could call all this music r and bass to be honest hmm. even the stuff like the really chill stuff but still it's like a vibe it's new it's like it's r and bass to me so i think at first it seems as if as if it's a trend but it's actually bigger than that i think it's the Holy Grail name for the next, <laughs> the next <laughs> R and B, like honestly, yeah, and it hasn't reached its potential yet because it hasn't been brought to the masses. It's been a, a niche for the past four or five years. Yeah, yeah. So imagine if a if a big platform got behind this platform, you know, what the impact could be. So I haven't had any real cosigns like this whole time. It's been like all underground, like you know, or like you know. So who knows? So then do you ever, I mean, not that it's like a direct cosign then, but like even with Mustard really like pushing that sound out there, how did you feel, like how do you feel about that? Well, I've never directly had a cosign from Mustard. Mm -hmm. I think Mustard at the time was super hot and relevant um, with that kind of style and um, that West Coast type style. And at the same time, both brands were like on the rise, you know, Um, but r and has always been its own thing, you know, not really reliant on just, like, a one thing in my eyes. You know, I feel like now we could call anything that just, like, is modern r and hmm. You know, it's just up to the public to decide what they want to call it. Mm. You know, if, you know, if you had to, like, 
category like is this R&B is this hip hop or is this R&B bass you know a spectrum of what it is you could pick R&B bass because it's a mixture of both yeah yeah it's not straight real R&B like what is real R&B like that's like some real <laughs> you know like Whitney Houston or something like some <laughs> some you know like it's just yeah, it's different. not traditional shit it's not like the R&B nah. soul type shit where people were like hitting all these crazy high notes and exactly yeah it's different, man. So I think R and bass is the perfect name to just it's like a mix baby. You know, you're Latin, but you're also Asian too. But you can't just say you're Asian because you're Latin too. Mm. So it's like, all right, you're R and bass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I love that explanation, right? man. Uh J May, man, again, I love this conversation, man. I really appreciate you like coming through, man. No, I appreciate you having me, bro. Like it's good to talk. Yeah, for sure, man. So J Main I know, er, where can everybody find you and r and Bass? Find me on uh, IG at It's J Main, um, r and Bass at r and Bass Music. Some girl has at r and Bass. She needs to let that go. She tried to ask me for $50,000. What? Um, well, if yeah. you have it trademarked, you can cop, you can cop that easy. That doesn't matter. Some guy actually has at Chipotle. Like, come on. He's not giving it up. Trademark <laughs> doesn't matter. Damn. Yeah, because she's not infringing on the brand. You know what I mean? Whatever. Well, At Arm Bass Music. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Yeah. Armbase.com. Whatever, man. Just search Arm Bass. You'll find it. It's not that it's, it's easy. Easy. R N B A S S. Well, this is the lunch table. Food for thought. I'm Nico Blitz, J Main. We are out, everybody. Peace. Peace.